Hey guys, I'm back with another video, and in today's video, I'm making an updated version of my basic minimap tutorial for Godot 4. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So, as always, I already have a simple scene set up, and this is just for testing purposes, and I do have my minimap added. So, first things first, let's go ahead and delete that so we can start from scratch. To start from scratch, we want to click on this plus icon to add a new scene. And as the main note of this scene, I'm going to add a color rect. Now the reason I'm adding a color rect as the main scene is because when my player reaches the edge of the map, so here I am in top view, when my player reaches the edge of the map, I don't want my minimap background to look like this essentially. So that's essentially why I'm adding a color rect as the main a node so that our minimap has a background and doesn't show uh, this weird gradient, uh, radio gradient when we reach the edge of the map. So the color we set for the color rect is what's going to show when we're on the edge of the map. And in this case I want it to be a dark color so let's just go ahead and do that right now in the inspector. And let's actually also change the color of the color rect to be mini map and I'm gonna call it mini map 2 since I already have my original mini map now in the inspector I want to go over to layout transform and then set a size for this uh, on the X it's gonna be 200 and on, on the Y it's also gonna be 200 so it's the same size then I'm gonna click on the anchor button and do top right I am also going to go ahead and move it down and into the left a little bit so that it's not directly on the edge. That looks fine to me. Then with the minimap still selected, I'm going to do control A and I'm going to search for a sub viewport container and add it as a child. I'm going to then click on this anchor button again and do full rec so that it takes up the entire size of that color rec and then I need to go ahead and add a sub viewport uh, so that we remove that little error oh not error but alert icon that we were getting and we want the size to be the same as the sub viewport container so in the inspector set that to 200 on the X and 200 on the Y so, so now it's the same size and then we also want it to have a transparent BG to on that way it has a transparent background and the color that we set for our color rect uh, actually shows. Now with that uh, done in order to actually be able to see stuff from our scene we want to add a camera to the sub viewport. So go ahead and add a camera 3D as a child of the sub viewport. We then want to rotate it on the X by negative 90 degrees and we can go ahead and move it up quite a bit. So go to transform and then for Y just add something like 20 uh, by default so it just moves up. Now I could preview the camera to see how it would look but since I don't have uh, the minimap in an actual scene we can't actually tell uh, how far things are but 20 should be fine and then we do want to set current to on in the inspector and then lastly for projection you could leave it as perspective but i would recommend to set it to orthogonal uh, so if you actually hover over projection it tells you what each per projection uh, mode does so orthogonal is basically just orthographic uh, projection where objects remain the same size on screen no matter how far away they are so that's the reason I'm setting it to this and pretty much uh, the size of your minimap or basically how big uh, the objects on your minimap uh, appear are dependent on the size here. So since it's orthogonal, the Y value doesn't really have too much of an effect. If it's on projection, then it will, uh, but uh, not projection. But if you set the projection to default, the perspective, then the Y value does matter. But since we have it set to orthogonal, the size is pretty much going to handle how far things appear to be. Uh, so it's kind of like the distance kind of you can think of it as that. So I'm just going to set it the same as the Y value uh, by default, so 20. 
and we're going to control it through our script uh, with an export variable. And yeah, that actually does it for the setup of the mini map. That's all you need. Now we can actually start adding some code. But before that, quick word from our sponsor, Simba. If you want to start your game development journey with Godot 4, check out the Simba Academy. They offer many easy to follow courses that are ideal for people of all levels from beginners to intermediates. What sets Simba apart is how they make learning fun and practical through their professional video tutorials, written lessons, and interactive quizzes. Build up your skills by working on real projects, building games of various genres ranging from open world, RPGs, and FPSs. Not only this, but Simba also in addition to all the Godot content offers courses covering various other topics like Python, Unity, Unreal, and many other tools. With one subscription, including a 7-day trial, you can unlock over 250 courses and 32 learning pathways. Thanks to Simba, you can get a special discount using the link in the description or pinned comment to get an extra 20% off your first year of your annual subscription on top of any ongoing discounts. Uh, this special offer is certainly valid for the first 50 subscribers, so if you're ready to dive into Godot 4, then definitely go check out Simba today to start your game dev journey. So select our main node, add a script, and you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Minimap with lowercase. Like so, Minimap 2, click Create, save it wherever you want. We can get rid of the default code. And let's get started writing some code here, which is going to be pretty simple. We're going to start off by adding an export variable, so export var. And this is going to be so that we can get the node path for our player. So export var target is going to equal, so colon, uh, it's going to be of type node path, like I said. So we're doing the colon to tell it what type of... Uh, variable this is going to be so it's going to be a node path it's it's going to be the path to our player and then we want to get the actual player itself so we can do on ready var player colon equals our get node so we're going to use the get node method to get our player from the node path that we're going to pass through the export variable so we can just pass target here. And this is how we're gonna actually get the player node. We're gonna add another export var while we're at it. Export var, and this is gonna be the camera distance. So this is what's gonna control our size on the camera. And we're just gonna call it camera distance because that makes sense to me, but you can name it whatever you want is colon equal to the default we set so 20 and we're gonna make it a, a float value or a double um, so 20.0 let's see we also need to get a reference to our camera so on an on ready var for our camera var camera colon equals and then we can just pass it the path of our camera there we go. So that's pretty much all the variables you actually need. And now we can actually make this work so that it actually follows the player. Because right now, if we add the minimap, we will see our scene, but it won't follow the player. So we need to add some code so that the camera can actually follow the player. So func, and then it's gonna be a process function. And in this process function, we're going to start by adding a guard class, essentially, so that we don't cause a bunch of errors if we don't have a target set uh, for our target. If we forget to actually add a node uh, path to our target, it won't spit out a bunch of errors. So to do that, we're going to just do an if statement. So if our target exists, then we want to do our code where it makes the camera follow the player. So if target exists, we're going to do camera dot position is equal to a vector three. And then it's the player's position. So player dot position dot X. And then here the Y doesn't really matter because the size is what actually matters if you set the projection to orthogonal, but we're just going to set it the same uh, default that we're using, so just the camera distance. So camera distance. 
and then we need the z value of the player so player dot position if i can type dot z so this line of code here will actually make the camera follow the player we're going to add one more line as well so that we can actually change the value of our camera distance as well uh, for the export variable and we're gonna do that to be let's see camera dot size is equal to our camera distance so in case you want to change the uh, size of your camera while you're running the game to see what best works so you can change the value from the inspector that's basically the only reason I added that line is actually not needed and we can just go ahead and save our scene wherever you want so I'm just saving it in my main uh, root uh, files so that should actually do it so let's go ahead and go over to main Go to 3d so that we can actually see our scene and we can go ahead and add our mini map under a canvas layer so you want to make sure that you actually add the mini map in a canvas layer as a child of it so we're going to do that right now by doing Control shift a and let's search for the mini map 2 and add it to our scene there we go so this is how our mini map appears and we can also make sure to set the target uh, so that it actually follows our player. So with the minimap 2 selected, simply go to your player and click and drag it into the target field in the inspector. So now that assigns our player as the target. And then let's just go over to 3D mode. And we can go ahead and test the scene out to see if it's working. So as you can see, it is actually working and it's that simple. So if you found the video helpful, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful day.